Hi, my name is Darius Skiddle, Director of Security Product Marketing here at Barracuda Networks. And I'm joined here today with Tim Jefferson, VP of Public Cloud. Uh, Tim, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tim, so before we go up into the cloud, I want to characterize security with inside a traditional data center first. So traditional network security in a data center is uh, built around centralized policy enforcement points. So as enterprises get larger, they may have tens, hundreds, or thousands of applications. And the best practice around data center architecture is to make sure that all those application traffic is tightly coupled back to centralized policy enforcement points. These tend to be network security appliances, network uh, next generation firewalls. These are amazing appliances that do an excellent job of identifying the type of traffic, the, the name of the application. They can match it against user identity and, and apply policy. Um, but as it turns out, those tightly coupled architectures that have appliances that need to scale vertically end up being a real anti-pattern when moving to the public cloud. Got it. So we're migrating essentially away from your traditional perimeter security up into the cloud. So then cloud is characterized somewhat differently. Let's talk about that now. So public cloud security, if you think about de application deployment best practices, you want to do almost the exact uh, opposite architecture. You want to make sure that your security architectures are loosely coupled and that they scale horizontally or elastically. Okay, so it's a very, very different, very different environment. And in terms of the features and functionality that I would have on a traditional on-premises firewall, I imagine differs somewhat as we get up into the cloud as well. So, with that said, let's. Barracuda has introduced cloud generation firewalls, and you're going to uh, you're going to talk to us a little bit about those. Um, the first thing that we need to be aware of as we move up into the cloud are some of the deployment best practices. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, it's, it's super important uh, for customers to make sure that as they're trying to move security controls in a public cloud and specifically using network security appliances, that those appliances support the deployment best practices for the environment they're going into. So the main public cloud providers, AWS, Azure, GCP, they all have very unique and differentiated deployment environments. They all have their own set of unique and differentiated native services. And a lot of the networking protocols and services that data center files rely on just aren't available in the public cloud. So this ends up marginalizing the value of a, of a data center firewall when deployed in the public cloud. So it's important to choose a product that understands and is tightly integrated into the environments they're deploying in. So what about how I would actually deploy a firewall up in the cloud? I mean, there's, a, there's an evolving uh, move away from or that, you know, uh, there is an emerging person in the, in the data center now, which, or the cloud data center, which is the Dev, DevSecOps engineer. Yeah. How does it affect them? How, does it, how do we facilitate their lives there? Well, I think what's interesting now is you have application developers who now own their infrastructure that they're deploying their applications into. Right. And they have to learn not only architecture, but the security best practices. So one of the key things they're looking for is something they're familiar with, which is an API. So it's important that the tools that they're using to instrument security in have a full featured API, something that allows them to orchestrate, deploy, and configure uh, third party things so they can build automated security templates and use those as part of their security framework. So these guys really don't care about the, the graphical user interfaces that, uh, that tr have traditionally been used. They just want the API hooks, um, how, what those actually do, and off they go, right? I think one of the key covenants of a cloud generation firewall is, is, is the full featured API. Uh, not requiring a management server. You know, uh, deploying a management right. server creates another layer of, of, of challenges around making sure that it becomes highly available and making sure that it has a, an API that the a DevOps engineer can engage with. In addition, you know, around deployment best practices, each application team wants to remain agile. So they can deploy their own security frameworks. They can iterate on those frameworks in their staging environments and push out live in a CI CD process. The last thing you want to do is institutionalize something that's tightly coupled, a centralized policy enforcement point where the any configuration change or rule change has a larger blast radius, which kind of limits the agility of, of security teams and applications. So um, the other you, you talk about elasticity a lot, agility, elasticity, and so on. Uh, in a traditional data center environment, uh, I used to have, or I still do have, one license, one firewall. Right? And now you talk about this elastic environment up in the cloud, which is really why people move up there in the first place. Um, and I could have presumably an environment where right now I have a handful of firewalls that are actually up and running, and five minutes from now, who knows, 100, 1,000, more, whatever, right? Um, a traditional licensing model probably might be a little bit more difficult to apply there. How does that work now? 
Yeah, I think if you, when talking to customers, one of the biggest constraints they have are, are commercial constraints. If they're trying to automate third-party security solutions into their CI/CD frameworks, the licensing costs tend to be a big barrier. Um, if, if they have to pay for a licensing cost for all the deployments, whether in all the staging environments from dev to dev test, all the way into production, uh, becomes cost prohibitive and most customers end up deploying security only when it goes in production. So for us, it's important to facilitate a DevOps model and by doing that, uh, building a licensing model that's truly sort of licenseless and allows customers to uh, to automate security controls all the way through the process. Got it. Right. So it's a, it's a lot more flexible. It's more of a pay as you pay for the, the the stuff that you use or the throughput, the secure throughput that you use, rather than by the firewall. So in a licenseless model, uh, a customer only pays for a license fee when the firewall sees traffic. So now they can automate the firewall into their security deployments and their dev tests or staging environments, and they only see a licensing fee when it sees test or production traffic. That's very different. Okay, so it's entirely elastic. It just follows that consumption-based approach or that utility-based approach that we're so so familiar with up in the cloud. But on the same token, if I have a, an environment that I've deployed that is largely static, are there other license models that you actually had, uh, offer as well? Yeah, we absolutely support you know, the traditional BYOL licensing. So we have customers who have uh, relationships with, with partners and they can engage their partners for, for existing licenses and move those into the cloud. Uh, and we also support all the cloud uh, marketplaces and they have a pay-as-you-go model as well. Very good. So there's that flexibility and agility in a cloud generation firewall that you would expect to see as well. Let's move on to another characteristic, or the third characteristic of a cloud generation firewall. Um, and that would be around specifically around cloud use cases that are somewhat different than they would be on-premises as well. Yeah, so specifically web application firewalls is a great example. In the public cloud, deployment best practice would dictate building a really loosely coupled environment where each application team had its own environment uh, and its own rule set to manage. You wouldn't want to build a central WAF and make, have all application teams route their traffic through that. That allows them to be loosely coupled and very agile. Uh, in addition, in a hybrid environment, you wouldn't want to route all your traffic back through a, a centralized policy enforcement point like on-premise. You'd want to be able to build full mesh or partial mouth tunnels to allow branch uh, to office connectivity. Very good. Tim, thanks for joining us today. I think it's pretty clear from that that it's time to leave your old security behind and now move up into the cloud generation. To learn more about Barracuda Cloud Generation Firewalls, please visit barracuda.com.